coming out of the range. Oh, oh, big shot that dropped. David Devereaux here with Charlie Parsons. How you doing, mate? Good, brother. How are you? I'm very good, actually. Yeah, it's good. Good to have you on. What 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 have the last twelve months been like for you? Just sort of blowing up, pretty much overnight. Yeah, oh, it's mad, mate. It's mad. I've always um done this and and loved it for my craft. So I was just getting a year ago today on my Snapchat actually, and uh, done my first trip abroad for work to LA. He obviously joined up with Boxing Social. Done a few trips abroad with them now. Um, just loving it, man. Just really blessed to be doing it, and uh, obviously this sort of blowing up overnight thing i just thought for a while i should start utilizing tiktok it's just the rest is history really just been going nicely what's it like being friends with eddie home do you have that same relationship off camera or uh, what's it what's it like between you two nah eddie um eddie's brilliant and he always gives me really really good time um but you got to remember how much, just how many interviews he does. And so obviously me and him have got like a good relationship on camera and such. And he'll, you know, if there's something I need to speak to him about off camera, he'll make the time for me. But, you know, it's not like we're close friends or anything. It's more like <laughs> yeah. a working relationship with each other. But, you know, I appreciate the, the time and the content that he does give me. Have you been recognised in public yet? Yeah, a few times. It's uh, it's a bit bit strange to be honest. Um, in my town where I live, Sirencester, a few times, which is weird. Like I go to the local on a on a, if I'm not working a Friday night and I have a few beers with my pals and a few people will say something. I was watching the England Iran game actually. Um, it was a Monday at one p.m. and there were these two lads from Leeds in there just screaming Parsons for like the whole ninety minutes. Yeah, it's 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 nice. It's it's humbling and it's weird. It's even weirder, like, when my mum sees it a little bit. My mum's like, what is going on here? Like, she doesn't really get understand it all. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's nice, bro. What interviews for you so far have been the most exciting and, like, the biggest deals for you that you're most excited to speak to? I get that a lot. And I don't really... There's never an, there's never interviews that stick out, like, um, to the back of my mind. Obviously, the Eddie stuff where there's good bits of banter involved. When you're going and you're doing interviews and you come out of the interview and you feel like really refreshed and you think, you know what, I've got something really good out of that. It doesn't even have to be with like an absolute mega star. Like my mate Brad Ray, who's a boxer, uh, done a really good like 30 minutes sit down with him. And, you know, we ended up talking all sorts, you know, whether that be like, you know, what food he enjoys when he's not in camp or, you know, what clothes he's going to buy like after the fight and just stuff like that. When you've got those ones that are that stick out a bit more and they're a bit more special, then, yeah, th- th- those are always good. And obviously, like, like I say, the Eddie ones are always exciting and, and, and good fun. Do you ever get nervous before interviews? No, no, I, I used to. Well, I say I used to. I remember I did my first ever show. And it was a fight zone show in Sheffield and it was in a car park. That was my first ever show as well, one of them. Yeah. yeah. And it was, uh, I, I was, I was petrified, bro. Like, I was proper, proper scared. It was the first time I'd done it. But I think that was probably a good show to ease the nerves out. Is there anyone that's still on your bucket list that you want to interview? Yeah, I'd love to do AJ one on one. Uh, grew up a bit of an AJ fanboy, to be honest. I remember the first fight of his I went to was Povetkin at Wembley, got the forty pound seats in the gods. Yeah. So getting AJ one on one would be nice. I uh I get on quite well with a few of his team at two five eight. So hopefully that's something we can work on for down the line. Like you mentioned earlier, you're now with Boxing Social. Before you were with Boxing Social, there was kind of a period where you were like sort of in between in mm. was that like a scary time for you? Were were you worried that this might have all been over before it even started? Yeah, good question, actually. Um <laughs> Yeah, I was I was scared. It was a scary period. My old company were brilliant to me. They made the decision to go down a different path. The owner of the company sadly passed away since then, so it sort of everything's disbanded there. Um but obviously it was such, you know, such an emerging project for me to be a part of and I was really given the power and the reins to sort of do what I wanted with it to then go into sort of a period of unemployment. Boxing Social came in, and I did have a few other companies who gave me good offers, actually. So I knew I was never going to be out of the industry, but it was just going for what was best for me. 
And since working for social, I didn't actually sort of realise that the power that they have, it's quite nice to all have it on a plate. But yeah, it, it was a nervous time, but had a lot of personal stuff going on in the summer as well. So it was also nice to have a bit of a break from everything and just kick back and not have to worry about too much on a work side. What would you say is the single highlight of your career so far? If someone were to ask you, what's the one moment that stands out to you? Oh, that is a that is a great question. I'm um, great. I'm better. Yeah, you're firing you, out. I'll take your job. Yeah, uh, mate. I don't know. There's always a bit of like a pinch yourself. Well, there used to be, not as much now. But I think probably that first trip to to America, like I say, a year ago today. Um, I come from quite humble beginnings, so we'd never really gone abroad as a family. I think I've been to Spain and Portugal when I was like seven and nine, but Apart from that, I've never gone abroad all my life. And I was a young carer, actually, uh, really? for a very long time, for about eight years for my grandparents. So we weren't able to go abroad. Um, and then the opportunity for me to go abroad for work came about, obviously, LA and Vegas all in one. That was a very, very special moment for myself. Is there anywhere you haven't been already that you're really hoping there's a big show that you can get there? Um... You know, with me, I'm a bit weird. I just like ticking off countries. So if I've been there before, I'm not. Don't I'm not going to say I'm not particularly asked about going back because that's not true. Obviously, <laughs> I'll go it's for you if you want. If you can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind, no, no, no. But I always like going to new places, and whether even like a new place just sounds crap. Like I've got a joke with my missus where I want to go to North Macedonia. <laughs> It's just such a random place that you can fly direct to. So even elsewhere in the Middle East, like Qatar, for example, where the World Cup is at the minute, or like, um, I know Dublin, Katie Taylor will be fighting there. I'm really looking forward to that. Just ticking off ticking off new places that I, ne- I haven't necessarily been to before. You've just lost all your North Macedonian fan base, mate. Calling it a yeah, random place. Yeah, 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 I know, yeah. They're going to they're gonna be Kugel <laughs> fans instead. I'm not going to be, I'm uh, not going to be welcome. So, as you mentioned earlier, the Misfits boxing, um, there's been some rumours of you potentially fighting on a card. Can you just talk to me a bit about that? Yeah, so I've sort of had it thrown to me as a joke. I said I would. Um, I'll be honest, the money would have to be right because I feel like I don't want to sell myself out. As much as I've gone down the TikTok route and everything, I still like my job is corporate interviewing, you know, and I stick to the real side of boxing. However, um, I get on well with the Sourlands, who co-promote, obviously, with KSI and Mams Taylor. Um, there was a bit of banter going back and forth with Fred. I don't think that's anything to be taken seriously. But Mams Taylor did follow me off the back of that. So who knows? If the, if the money was right and there was an opportunity there to get in the ring, I would definitely, I'd definitely do it. Have you had any boxing experience before? Briefly. Briefly, um, I've had good combat sports experience. From a very young age, I did taekwondo at like a really high level. Um, I ended up stopping when I was 13, but I won um, a gold in the Europeans and a silver in the Europeans. And then I boxed really, really loosely from like 13, 14, um, a good little amateur gym, but I never had any fights. And then I actually like I snapped a bone in my knee playing rugby. And I swear oh. to God, I've never done any sport since. Could have gone pro all... without the knee injury, one of them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, could have gone pro without the knee injury. I know that old cliche, but yeah, bro. Um, you know, I I could definitely fight a little bit. What'd your ring? What music be? It's a great question. I think everyone that works in this sport would be lying if they ain't thought about that. I love Dave. I like Burner Boy as well. Um. Bit of Nadja music in there, you know how we do. We'll see, I love Pot of Paper as well, Meeks. Um, You're just going through your Spotify rap. <laughs> yeah, I am actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, honestly, that top five that I had on my Spotify rap is literally just who I like blast constantly. So it'd have to be Dave, I don't know what song. What's your What's your favourite boxing memory growing up? Not necessarily doing it, but watching it. Like what, what sticks out to you? Um, I remember from a really young age... Uh, my granddad, I was very close with watching boxing on terrestrial TV with him when I wouldn't even have a clue who was fighting. My granddad was a big sports fan, um, definitely into his boxing. 
I suppose that's sort of how I got into it myself. Like I say, I don't think it would be a fight as such, but that's sort of memories that I, I, I treasure quite closely to my heart, watching boxing on terrestrial TV or something like that, you know, not even know who's on, just enjoying it, you know, being around someone that you love so much and, and then watching something that you've gone on to make a career out of. Next question. It's a bit of a, bit of a job interview question. So it's all right, this, but um, where, where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? North Macedonia or in North Macedonia on holiday, sat by a pool if they have if they have like swimming pools and, and good weather in North Macedonia. Don't know much about the country. Um no, in all seriousness, I would like to be I someone I actually really look up to is Josh Denzel. Obviously he went on Love Island and made a, a really good platform for himself, but if you put that to one side, he is a fantastic presenter. He does work in F1, he does work in football, he does work in boxing. But the access that he gets and, and working in other sports, I, I am desperate to to dabble in, in football one day. But once again, that's something that I want to, like what I've done in boxing, where it doesn't feel, it is corporate, but it's also not like I'm able to create relationships, etc. How would you like to be remembered? What legacy do you want to leave behind? Um, your questions have been good. I like it. I appreciate cool. it. Um, I would like to be remembered most importantly. Um, it sounds a little bit cringe, really, but like a nice guy who gave it everything. Um, as much as I may occasionally come across a bit cocky and arrogant online or whatever, I'm actually very down to earth and very thankful. I mean, I looked up to people, and I still do now. Oscar Bevis at IFL is now one of my like best mates you know i wouldn't be in this industry if it weren't for the opportunity that he gave me so i'd love to be able to help people themselves if someone was able to land a job because of some advice i'd given them or something like that you know that would be more important than to me and obviously i want to be known at being good as good at my job as well of course